Hi, I'm Becca Otis from Five Lines Pottery in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I'm Ryan Durbin from RD Ceramics located in Southgate, Kentucky. And welcome to Wheel Talk. Hey guys, we've loved answering all of your questions so far. If you'd like to hear your question on the podcast, please send them to us on Instagram at Wheel Talk Podcast or by email to wheeltalkpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks. Do you hear Erica dropping the clay in the background? It, yep. It sounds like <laughs> four drums, like something really momentous is about to happen back there. Yep, for sure. Love it. Well, we should just fucking start. We're live. I mean, we're fucking live. It's recording. We're with Caroline Clark today. Caroline, say hello. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yes. Yeah. From Revisionist Studios. Yeah. Is it Caroline or Carolyn? It is Caroline. Caroline. Uh, I said it right. You did because it's spelled line like a line. I don't know where the confusion comes in, but I answered anything remotely close to that. Okay. You know what? That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good. Well, way. you answer to Carol. Not happily, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. I. So, how was everybody's weekend? Let's just talk about how our weekends were. Or weeks, or... It is Monday. Weekends. What did you do, Caroline? Um, I have COVID. So, I sat around having COVID. Uh, I Wait, had you COVID. had to reschedule last time. Yeah. Because of that. So, it's still the back end of that? No, it's... Um, I'm one of those really fucking lucky people that got the rebound COVID. So, I, like, was getting better. And then it was like, wait, no fuck you and now i it sucks again so it's not as bad as the first time but uh so i've just been uh in my house in the woods kind of making some pottery but i'm real tired so that's hard too no okay. it's very important to like take breaks during those times you know yeah yeah nice so did you like watch something interesting or uh i have a seven-year-old so i watched him run around my house talking about pokemon for the past God knows how long. Okay. But that yeah. sounds fantastic. It started it, Poker Face, which is actually really good. Poker is it a show? Face. Yeah, it's Natasha Leone. Um, it's on Peacock. There's so many freaking streaming things now. Um, but yeah, I, I recommend. I've only watched the first episode, but the first episode's like movie length. So. Yeah, yeah. those shows now, it's like, would I rather watch a show that's like six hours long or a movie that's an hour and a half? But somehow, like, <laughs> I can't get myself to watch a movie, but I'll watch like six hours yeah. of the show. It doesn't make any sense. Well, I think if I feel awesome. like I'm, I feel like I missed something, and I'm like, that's gonna be important if I miss that in a movie because they they cut that down significantly to meet like what they had to show for an hour and a half or an hour forty five. So I'm like, if I miss a part of a show, it's like six hours. Like, who cares if I miss five minutes or whatever? Mm. Do you know. guys watch stuff while you make pottery? I do. I watch Star Trek. Is it, are you, is it a rewatch? No, but I've gotten to the point where I care so little about it that I can, like, walk away. And, like, it's not that I don't care about it. It's just that, like, you know, it's all kind of the same. And I'm not really, especially now because I'm in fucking Enterprise, which is g awful. And, um, and I don't care about it, so I'm just, like, walk away. And I'm is like, it, oh, like... A progressive storyline or is it a pretty like sequential like you could watch any of the episodes anytime and it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme i feel like you could watch any of the episodes but it does help to have the background okay so, so it's, it's not quite like, serialized but it's like no. kind of just random episodic like right like there is there is some like you know like drawbacks not drawbacks but like they look back into the tip like previous things somewhat to kind of like, you know, um, but it's still like entertaining and it still like holds its own as its own episode, you know? So, but it's definitely not like a mash episode where you can come in and you're like, sweet. Like there's no. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that's what you're watching. Usually I watch like, I sometimes will watch things that I've already seen. Like I watch this weekend. I was in there a lot yesterday, so I watched the movie American Made, which is like Tom Cruise, where he's like flying planes and like smuggling drugs and stuff. Um, and then I finished 
the series Midnight Mass, which is on Netflix, which is like it's like a horror thriller, like okay. religious drama sort of. It's like really good. Whether you, you don't have to be religious to watch it, but it's like really interesting. Um, yeah, not really. Because I'm not, but it's like it was like really cool. Um, and then I watch I sometimes watch like Formula One racing or some sports thing. So something that I don't have to like focus on too much. It's just, it's kind of like I can look up and down. It's not that big of a deal. Do you watch stuff? Because I'm looking at your like your stuff and it's like pretty intricate. Yeah, I, I can't really watch anything. I listen to you guys a lot uh, yeah, like, <laughs> I'm working. I do listen to a lot of podcasts. I've been trying to do audiobooks, but I think I don't like audiobooks. And I, I feel bad about that for some reason, you know? I don't yeah. know. I think it's fiction. I don't want to hear somebody read fiction. I was an English major, and, like, I like to read the book. Mm. I have a friend. Well, I was just at Tim... Kowalczyk's house, the card cardboard Tim, and um, his wife reads, listens, and digitally reads. Like she'll read three books at the same time. Um, wow. And she listens to audiobooks on one and a half speed, like Ryan listens to podcasts, and she says that she likes it better. Mm-hmm. Okay. Faster. So maybe that's. It. I wonder if there's anything with like listening to fiction because. Typically, if you read it, it's in your own voice, right? As you're, you're reading like, versus somebody else's voice. Like, yeah, it doesn't like sound like you think it. it should. Yeah, like, I could listen to nonfiction because that's just a podcast, basically. Um, but there's something about the fiction. I I can't get into it in somebody else's voice. That's fair. I don't listen to fiction books, so I don't, I don't like, read fiction at all. I only read nonfiction. Yeah, so. I don't either. Yeah. We're not fantasy types. I'm not a reading I know I'm, I know I'm watching Star Trek, but like, yeah, that's just real life, but in space, right? In the future, yeah. <laughs> like, duh. Um, yeah. How was your show, Becca? So, I did. Um, have you ever heard of the Makers Market? Market for Makers. That's what it's called. Market for Makers. And I did that. It's in Chicago. And they have it in many different places. I think they have one in Brooklyn. They have one in Miami. They have one in Houston. They have one in Nashville, L.A., um, Chicago. And I think that was it. I don't know if they moved to Seattle yet. But um, so it's like one of those shows on like, Ren- I don't know if you've heard of Renegade. But Renegade's like a huge fucking show. And it's on that level. I'm currently wait waitlisted for the Brooklyn Renegade. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think you would do really well at a show like that. Um, so, so yeah, so I got into like I got in like immediately to this show, and um, was this application sort of deal? Um, there was an application. It's on the website. Oh, okay. I'm at so Angela Lindemann's house, so there's like four dogs. <laughs> so you, so you just had to randomly like find it, or somebody told you about it? Yeah, and um, yeah, somebody told me about it. Savannah told me about it, and uh, it's like it was four hundred dollars for a booth for a four by six booth. So it's four hundred dollars for a four by six booth, and then. Um, it was two levels, and I've never seen that many people at a show in my entire life. Like, it was indoor then? It was indoor. You had to pay to get in. Uh, the tickets were $8 if you purchased them beforehand, $12 if you were at oh the door. Oh my gosh, that's expensive. $25 yeah. if you got VIP, which was both days. And, wow. Um, or it was $20, maybe 20 and um, it was fucking packed. It was packed. How many vendors were there? There was like 120 vendors, and they just have them fucking sardined like all the way through. And because my booth is very like tactile, and you have to like pick things up and like move things around and feel things, I think that that was a disadvantage for me because they were so. And we were like, I was in the middle row, and. 
there was like a very clear way to kind of like move around the room and I was not in that way, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. All that to say, uh, the first day I did like a grand, which I did not feel like was good enough. Um, I'm paying 400 bucks for a booth. I want to at least make 4,000. And um, the second day, I maybe made more than a grand because I didn't look at like before or after taxes. But the second day, it added up total to $2,700 for the weekend. And which is fine. I'm like not going to complain about that, you know. But also like in retrospect, I was talking to another person that had earrings that were not like mine definitely different than mine but clay earrings like so they're they were glazed on the front not on the back and they were more like flat earrings as opposed to what i have round earrings and um they were saying that they expect to make five thousand dollars at this show and like the first day they made three three grand and so i didn't hear what they made the second day but um so and they were just one row over and like On the second level, too? Yeah. Yeah, and so it's very interesting, like, the dynamics. Because it's not the show, right? It's not the show. The show's not bad. The show's not bad. Uh When you establish that the show is not bad, you're like, okay, why is it me? What? they're a pretty close comparison for you, it sounds like. I don't know what their price points were, but... Yeah, it's a little bit different style, I have to admit. But, like, like, you know, I don't have anything shiny. Um... And my booth was a little bit different. Like, it's it's different. It's, um, like, you know, I, I, what did I told somebody, that I feel like my booth is like a museum. People look at it and they're like, wow, this is so cool. And then they walk away. That's, um, like, my life. Because <laughs> they're scared right. to touch it or what? I think so. Like, they're scared to touch it or it's, like, something so different that they're not willing to, like, in, like, to even think about it. And... So, uh, but I was happy with what I made at the end. And, like, I was feeling really, really sorry for myself on, at the beginning of the day yesterday. And I, like, sent Val a text was saying, like, I need to feel sorry for myself. I'm not good at this shit. Blah, 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 blah. And, like, spewed all this, like, negativity. And then it was fine. You know, like, got it out of my system. And then I was fine for the rest of the day. But, um... But yeah, it was, uh, it was good. I mean, it was good. The, I, Andrew, not this Andrew. There's a lot of Andrews in my (laughs) life right now. Um, Seattle Andrew knows somebody who's in the, that was in the show and they sell, uh, she sells greeting cards. And I went down and talked to her and she was like, I need more space. And I was like, so do I. (laughs) And, um, so I was like, you know, I don't know if you can share a booth, but it would be awesome if we could share a booth and just split the cost. Because then it would still be $400, but we'd have a, like a 10 by 8 that we could work with instead of a 6 by 4, you know? So. Oh, okay. So I was like, how would you get a bigger booth? You're both in your own same booth space, but there's a sh- there's a bigger option. Yeah, like they have like 8 10, 10 by 10 spaces, basically. Mm. And... um if we like shared a booth, like a corner, then we could both like set up and it'd be nice. And especially because we're both very color orient, like colors, lots of colors and, but very different items. So Hmm. completely kind of like the coffee festival, sort of like you have your side, I have my side. Right. If it's a corner. We don't even know if they're like open to us sharing a booth, but we talked about it and that's what we want to do in November if we can. So. And it's in Chicago again at that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sweet. So, uh, overall, I'm not upset. That's how I feel about the show. Overall, I'm not upset. Well, also, it's the first time selling it. Like all those takeaways, right. like that's good. So it just means oh, yeah, the next it was time good. you and have more to, data and information yeah, to and I, improve. I talked to one of the coordinators, and she was like, "Your stuff is fantastic, and I think you need to like highlight the ceramics more, and I think you need a bigger space." She's like. You just need a bigger, because I was kind of telling her the same stuff, like the tactileness. She's like, yeah, I think you just need more space that people can actually, like, exist in the booth, you know, for a hot second. Yeah. And she also told me that they're going to do one in Los Angeles, potentially in February. So, um, yeah, you might not, already be out there. Yeah, not confirmed. But if they do one 
in the beginning of the year in Los Angeles, I will do that one for sure. Because Los Angeles, those are my people. And there's different coordinators for each one, I'm guessing? No, they, like, travel around, I think. Oh, really? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. I just figured each city had their own, and they just had, like, a top-level branding. I don't know. That lady lived in Los Angeles. Like, she lives in California. Wow. What an undertaking. That's crazy. Okay. That's fun. Yeah. Anyway. I, I didn't have an exciting weekend. Went to a kid's birthday on Saturday. A lot of studio time yesterday. That's about it. So. Sweet. Okay. All right. Onward. We, we should probably talk about our kilns. Sure. Yeah. Still haven't set it up. I'm on my way, though. I'm getting rid of that other one. You finally figured out a price. They Yeah, I figured out a price. That's a step closer. Are you selling the old one? I'm selling the my old Olympic. Oh. Yeah. He would never sell an L and L. Why would he never sell an L and L, Ryan? Because it's good, and it has a lot of f- features. Where can you go to get an L and L kiln? Hotkills dot com. <laughs> You're the best. Uh, With the assist. If Caroline, if you got an L and L, what would you be the most excited about? Like, which, if you got a brand new L&L kiln, what would you be the most excited about? Uh, I would be super excited about uh, programming something with, a, I have a manual kiln, and it's, oh, like, yeah. from the 80s, like, hadn't been used since the 80s when I got it. And so, it's it's totally manual. Um, it, if I set it to fire a uh, cone 5, I get cone 6 on the bottom. Five in the middle, four at the top. I would be super nice. excited, oh super excited to have some sort of consistency with an L and L kiln. Zone control. Yeah. Zone control would <laughs> yeah. be really nice for you. And also, I assume that, like, especially since your work is kind of like got a lot of stuff to it, it would be nice to be able to like program certain programs into it and like save them so that you can just like hit go. Well, I'm like I can't do a control cool like. I would love yeah. to do a control control cool. So Yeah, you could do that with the Genesis controller that comes with it for free. There we go. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Love it. Hotkills.com. I was waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Caroline, you had a question for us. Yeah. I don't know if you have the question. If you don't, we can copy it and I can put it in here. Uh, I think I remember more or less what it was. Can uh, you first, wait, before what? you do the question, can you first tell us where you live, how long you've been doing pottery, like the quick sure. kind of like rundown, okay. if this is your full-time sh- shtick? Uh, so this is my part-time shtick because the rest of the time I am the primary caregiver for my mom who has early onset Alzheimer's which is why I moved back to the woods of South Carolina, um, which I swore I would never come back to, but you know. Um, So I'm in rural South Carolina. I'm closest to Columbia, which is a city, but it's- College town, Columbia? Yeah, University of South Carolina is there and there's a a few other colleges there. Um, So I kind of, uh, I don't have a degree in art, and kind of just dabbled in ceramics like I would take a class every five years or so um and then when I moved back down here uh we were I was living in New York for a long time and there's nothing to do here so I was like let me just get back into ceramics and then got really back into it as one does with ceramics um and so I've been selling my work for about a year and a half now okay um yeah And uh, your Instagram is Revisionist Studio. Quite literally, go follow her. If especially if you like anything C related, this stuff is fucking inspired. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) Thanks. Your imagination must be fucking wild. It's inside my head is a crazy place to be. I love it. Thanks. <laughs> so for I mean, those who, it's weird 
Like, it's it weird. is weird. For those who are, are not going to go, like, cannot see it right now, I will try to describe what we're looking at. We're looking at, like, mugs that are primary colors, like, primary bright colors, and, or things that are primary bright colors with, like, almost barnacle-like shapes on them, and, uh, like, textures, and very, like, shells and seashells. Like coral and... and- Coral and all that stuff, like a bowl with a freaking mushroom coral coming out of it. I don't know what that's called. I'm not that smart. But um Well, it's all like coral and mycelium mushroom inspired, but none of it's real. Like it's not I don't take exactly from Right. So right, right, right. So that's kind of what you can kind of like think about and and very good colors, very colorist, um sc- sculptural. So, yes. Okay, so now let's go into your question. All right. So my question here, Ryan put it here, um, was do you have any re- recommendations for finding your people, i.e. customers, when your work isn't very traditional? I live in South Carolina. My work is a little too weird for the galleries here, which are pretty traditional and conservative. I do well at art markets, but those are few and far between here as well. All right. Yeah. Which – which co- what kind of markets have you done? Like, how did you find them? And So I, there's a, a market in downtown Columbia every Saturday that's really great. They block off several um, blocks of Main Street. It's called Soda City Market. Um, and it's a mixture of food trucks and artists and things. Um, and I, that's where I started selling my work. Um, and I'll do that once or twice a month. And, like, it's fine. Um, I make a little bit of money there. Um, but mostly people are there, like college students are there to like get lunch and like they'll buy a pair of earrings or something like that. Like it's not going to be a big money maker. Um, but when I've done things that are specifically art markets, you know, art festival kind of things local, I do really well. Okay. Um, I had, I was in my first gallery show this past weekend. Um, Oh, congratulations. Thank you. It was a group show down in Charleston, which is a little bit funkier and there's a little bit more, I mean, it's coastal. So like the ocean stuff goes over well. Yeah. Um, and that was really great. Um, I, so I, I got, um, feedback from an art show that I applied to and that you had the option of like, if you don't get in, do you want feedback? Like, absolutely. That's awesome. Um, so the guy's feedback was, okay, there were these couple of things I wasn't sure about, but ultimately it was pretty. And that's why I didn't get in. It was because it was pretty. That was like, that was what, it. Yeah. A couple of things they weren't <laughs> sure about. What so is like it? there were questions about scale or like function or what? Or, that yeah. does, that's not very descriptive. Yeah. It wasn't very helpful, but the like, okay, you didn't get in because your work is pretty. I feel like kind of is the reason I haven't really pursued many galleries because I feel like there's this, I I talked to one gallery owner who my stuff wasn't a fit for her gallery at all, but she was really helpful. She was helping me with portfolio. And she said, you know, like, I don't think that you're going to have much luck with galleries because your work is very joyful, not serious. And there's this idea that joy is not as complex of an, emotion or as worthy of exploration as trauma in capital a art and so becca's like what (laughs) that sounds like fine art like pedestal gallery work though i don't yeah like do you do you want pedestal gallery exhibition kind of sales or would you be happy in like a boutique shop that fit your vibe i would be happier with the boutique shop that fit my vibe i think you know i want my stuff to be used um because you're making functional work right it's yeah not yeah it's all functional sculptures. yeah it's like not sculptures yeah uh, what's your preferred like way to sell like do you like the markets do you have time for the markets or do you prefer to hand it off to somebody to sell if you could find some regularity with that i do like the markets um but time is an issue also just because there's not that much here you know, like I have, I would have to travel, like I'm traveling to Asheville, North Carolina to do a market. I'm going down to the coast to do another market. So what kind of hours are those for traveling? Um, the one on the coast is probably about 
two and a half hours to get down okay. there. And then Asheville is probably about three or four. Okay. Um, so it's not like you're traveling eight hours, but it's still a no. good Yeah. It's still like a day. Yeah. Um, a long so, day, at least. Yeah, yeah, a long day. And, like, I, you know, I have a seven-year-old kid. I take care of my mom. So, like, just, like, taking off in mm-hmm. a week or something isn't really an option. Um, so I'm I'm thinking that, like, selling online or trying to get – do more, like, boutique-type stuff might be a better option. Yeah. Is there a part of either your city or Columbia or somewhere nearby that's, like – a shop that you really like to go to that you think like a pop-up would be an option that you could kind of partner with? Or is it still in that question of like, Ooh, I don't know that I would say like, you're not selling in their location. You're kind of popping up to kind of fit their vibe of customers that could cross paths with you. Um, I would have to look for that. Columbia is very like Southern preppy kind of. Yeah. Right. Um, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it kind of reminded Becca. Do you remember go? Where was that in uh, Alabama? It, yes. Was, uh, what was the university? Old Miss. Wherever Old, Old Miss. Miss. It was in Mississippi. It, it kind of reminded me of that. Person looked like they played tennis. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? There's got to yeah. be some like cool vibe shop. I don't know. That's honestly how I felt about this show this last weekend. Everybody had those fucking tennis outfits on. I was like, oh, gross. Uh-huh. yeah and like i know that and i have like met some other makers here that are more my vibe and um yeah. you know we use each other as resources as much or as like can. i feel like like brewery vibe or like something that's pretty chill but i don't okay, know that's a good idea i don't know the kind of venues you have there but I'm thinking getting into a place that you would shop or that people would hang out that would fit your vibe of your work. Like, where do those people hang out? That's a good, a good thing to think about and look into. I feel like I don't shop anywhere, so <laughs> that's fair. That's a hundred percent fair. Um, I feel like for one, I think you could get an online situation going quite well if you pushed. The interwebs somehow, I don't know how. I don't know how. But, like, I think your stuff is cool enough and and weird enough that you could get, like, a little cult following if you kind of, like, really geared it towards that, you know? Like, really put the effort in. And I I keep thinking Florida. Like, my whole body is, like, you need to sell this shit in Florida. Um, I'm not that far from Florida. <laughs> you're not that far from Florida. And like, but also like galleries in Florida, Key West, something in like Key West. That's like the perfect type of vibe for that. Like, you know, someplace where, or was it, Bili- uh, what is the Missouri place we went to? Biloxia? Biloxi. Oh, Biloxi. Biloxi. Like someplace like that where it's like, a beach town and people like go into these stupid tourism shops and like and like a little handmade tourism shop like that's what I would see you know and I don't know if what that means like whether it means like maybe reaching out to those shops specifically and being like yo I really think that I would fit in this space with you and I would love to do wholesale or consignment with you you know I don't think that you are too fucking fucking pretty for galleries. I think that's <laughs> absolute bullshit. It is absolute bullshit. Um, there are, like, I just, like, when you said that, I was like, have you ever seen Cardboard Tim's work? It's the ugliest shit in the planet. Like, it's garbage. And I mean ugly in the sense of, like, he wants, he is, like, not. He wants it to look like garbage. Yeah. Like, he cardboard. Wants it to and... look like garbage. And, like. I love his stuff, by the way, if anybody did not understand that reference. Um, the, <laughs> but, like, yeah, like, there are galleries that take in stuff that's not, like, education, fine art, blah, 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 you know? Mm-hmm. And and you just have to kind of maybe do the research to find those galleries. 
and like reach out to them like try to get into shows like i'm sure there's like aquatic type shows holy shit you should reach out to fucking aquariums and shit like that and like see if you could make is it's like a museum shop almost you know like see if you can make little trinket dishes for an aquarium like the gift shop like that sounds like something that sounds like the vibe that i see i don't know that seems like your kind of thing that's a great idea that would have never occurred to me <laughs> well it's it's weird right like my friend uh krista bermeo uh she does jewelry she does glass jewelry and her like fucking thing is museum shops like she sells primarily out of museum shops I would have never thought about selling out of a museum shop. Like, Mm -hmm. you think about those and you're like, you have to be, like, fucking amazing to sell out of those. You don't. You have to be a normal person. And all you have to do is send an email with one picture saying... And usually it's a small staff of people. So it's probably just a couple of people that are just having a look at options. And they, they probably don't even know how to find people that match this. Yeah. And you can... You can even contact museum shops and be like, hey, you're a coastal museum shop. My shit might work. You know, like. That's I think that that's probably the way. But I still think that if you got the right cult following on Instagram, you could, you know, you can make it work. So in terms of finding people like social media wise um have you have you guys ever like done ads on instagram like i feel like you did at some point i have and i okay so i have i also have like i've done i'm not a huge proponent of giveaways but I think that if you do them right, you could do a giveaway that's like, hey, once I reach a thousand people, I will give away this mug. You know, once I reach like 1100 people, I will give away this mug. I've done those like you have to do them like every once in a while, you know, but that way, you know, you're increasing your followers, but they're like people, actual people, Mm -hmm. you know, be like, hey. I'm, like, so close. You're at, like, 948 right now. You're, like, hey, I'm so freaking close to 1,000 followers. Can, if you can share this post and I can get followers, once we get to 1,000, I'm going to randomly choose a person on this post that comments, you know? Um, and then say, but if we hit 1,500, I'll give away two. Or something like that, you know? Like, something small or whatever. Like, make it reasonable. Don't, like, go all the fucking way out, you know? But, um, but, yeah, I think that, like, that's actually how I grew a lot of my followers at the very beginning. Um, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of doing giveaways because, like, hey, (laughs) it's the 4th of February. Let's do a giveaway. I'm not a fan of that. I'm a fan of it if it gives you something. Be very intentional about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good so, point. And like. Yeah. I mean like it's cute as shit man. They're so colorful. Like the, there's a freaking market out there for you. And you just have to find it. The, like, the, the person I was thinking of. To kind of. Emulate a little bit. That might be good to look at. Um, I'm thinking like. Melanie from Spell Ceramics. I don't know if you follow her. Uh, but, yeah. She does. She is on a be in a beach town in Outer Banks, North Carolina, I think. So, like, I think having sunshine will help your pieces photograph well. And like, when you do reels or whatever, sunshine's gonna help. It's gonna get that beach vibe, the the light. Um, and I don't know if you like when you go to Charleston or something like that. Like taking some pieces with you and getting some some videos, some photos, like in sand on the beach. I think some of that could help with, like, building that vibe that you're looking for. 
Yeah, well, like, you go to Charleston, or if you do go to a beach town, like, for the summer or whatever, take some of your pieces in a box and take them around to other studios, like, to some galleries that actually sell pots or, like, those little stores that you think are cool. Then you can just be like, hey, like, these are my pots. Like, how do you feel about them? Like, you want to wholesale with me? Like, <laughs> make a little just script. Just slap a mug down and say, how do you feel about this mug? How do you feel about this mug? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so hard. You have to, like, really put yourself out there. And the easiest way to do that is when you have a piece to show them. Just be like, even if it's a small piece. Honestly, like, if you just made them a little pinch pot with your little weird floofies on it, like... And just be like, hey, I made this. I sell these and I wanted to give it to you and just leave it there. You know, that goes a long way, too. And it could be just like a little whoops. I was watching one of your videos Um, and I see you have like earrings and stuff, too. So the earrings and stuff are polymer clay. Who the fuck cares? They're great. (laughs) Yeah, I don't see I don't see that much on here except on your sh- from your shows you have them shown. There's yeah. uh, there's another I, video you've got one. My older stuff, I cuz I started doing most of the sculpting in polymer clay during the pandemic. I didn't have access to a studio. Yeah. Uh, and my more recent like I'm, you know, ceramics is all consuming, so I've mm-hmm. been doing these mostly are, that. These are so goddamn cute. Like Are you still making them? Um a little bit. Uh, I still have some to sell. Like if I, when I go to markets, I I bring them. Okay, so it's not something that you would want to have in boutiques. Possibly. Okay, you wouldn't feel like overwhelmed if you took them and a boutique took a bunch of them and you were like, okay, I guess I got to make a bunch more for. No, I still like making them. It just has okay. kind of fallen off just because. I feel like there would be a market for those. I mean. Maybe that's your door in, like, get in with the earrings in a boutique because the customers know that those have more potential for selling. Yeah. Um, and then, I like, Becca sort of was doing that with her fidget stones a little bit. I think she was just, like, give them to some studios or give them, like, a pair or whatever and be like, hey, I make these. Yeah. Here's my card. I would love to consign with you or wholesale yeah and i feel like the earrings would be easier to especially shipping those and stuff yeah and yeah they're super easy okay i have a challenge for you too i think that i know you're taking care of your mom i get that so this doesn't need to be like immediate but in the next couple of like days or whatever take videos just short like 20 second videos of your process or of doing something like attaching things and post a video a day for a week. Oh God. Okay. I know. <laughs> Set a time. Or, or just do like. Or a three photo. Video, three videos a week. Three Set videos a, a week. And then see yeah, how. It I goes. never. I never take video. I almost never take video of my process. Well, um, right now, people so, yeah. are into process, so yeah, do <laughs> just set your camera up, take, like, just put the video on, start doing your thing, put a, f- do some cuts if you need to, uh, put a freaking beautiful song on it if you need a song suggestion, ask Ryan, he's great at that. I, and, that is the most stressful part of reels, so, yeah. Or just pick some instrumental, like, chill music that yeah, people can watch. Because those details, like this choral detail... I don't know how you get that. I'm guessing you probably push clay through a sieve or something and then cut it off. I've seen people do that. And then you attach it like. Which one? I'm like looking at your one from six days ago. Your, t- your second t- to last t- post. I gotta open Instagram. Yeah, it looks like little hairs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that um, That's through a tea strainer. Yeah. yeah. Like just the process of pushing that clay through the tea strainer and having a video showing it go through. Okay. That could be like, like five seconds. Quite literally, that's all you need. Yeah. Like right. it's a wrote it Yeah, down. it doesn't have to be complex and then you can cuz a lot of times when I look at pieces I'm like how do they do that part or are they carving that? What which it, parts like multiple glazes versus you Yeah. Know. It can be the same thing over and over and over and over again. Like 
I do the literally same video over and over and over again because all I do is make round things. And people don't <laughs> care. It's a different song, so it's fine. It's very method. It's very like um you have to care less. I was going to say methodical, but it's like soothing to watch, yeah. especially something like your pieces where you're you're building it up, right? Like mm-hmm. it's a it's a blank canvas and then you're slowly building it up. Yeah. So there, there's something satisfying about seeing it come to life in a sense. Like the stuff is almost like growing on it. Yeah. As you're working. Okay. Um. I wrote it down. I'm going to put a box next to it so I can check it off. There you go. There you because go. more people are out there. You just haven't found them. Yeah. But there's a cult following for this type of stuff. Like the sea mermaid like colors and yeah you need to find a mermaid festival and sell uh, there does brooklyn still have the coney island still have the mermaid parade i don't know but i think that florida has a mermaid festival yeah what is what is your um what's your interactions like at shows like like how are people resonating most are they resonating with the functional like Mugs and things, the earrings, the the vases, like what are they? The the things that people are most excited about um, are mugs and vases. Okay. Um, and like you know, like I can tell, but like you, they they come in and their face just like lights up and it's like, oh my god, I love this. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then I get a lot of you know when I'm doing the the ones in Colombia, I get a lot of ladies coming in and say, this is different, and then. Walking mm-hmm. away, um, but yeah, and yeah, I didn't ask for. <laughs> I think I think in terms of what sells best is always mugs. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so I think having and maybe that's the maybe that's the easiest thing for if you approach shops with like, here's a selection of four mugs that I've got like. A range of options you know i'd love to consign or whatever well that's it, i'm still i still consider myself a baby potter um so like i don't have a whole lot of consistency like in terms of i do different mug body shapes i do different handle shapes um i like i wonder if i need to try and focus down a little bit more on having i don't think so like I feel like you can like that's part of what you offer is you offer the one of a kind like I mean maybe they just give you a couple things of like we like our customers really resonate with these colors and maybe if you have colors in that already and you don't have to go out and find colors to match your aesthetic or like you have four different options they're like we really like the looks of the mushrooms and the you know the these pinks or something like that and then you can like start there because it gives them comfort with, hey, you're willing to like meet us in the middle of like, we know you make a lot of things, but like we just like these couple to start with to see how people resonate. And then you kind of go from there. It's kind of like a confidence building, trust building. And then you see what people think because, you know, the vases, maybe there's a. Are there florists out there that are not they're a little quirky? Like I don't, I'm trying to think of florists. There's not that would a be... whole lot of quirky <laughs> anything. I wouldn't I wouldn't shoot for anything local, honestly. Doesn't yeah. sound like locals your your vibe, you know? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Um. I have a a question about the non-local for you guys. Are you both just selling on Etsy now? Um, I still sell on my website. I don't know why, but well, that's kind of my question because I made like a shop on my website because you're supposed to have a shop on your website. But I am thinking about going back to Etsy because it was easier. Do I you guess. pay for the e-commerce part plan of your website, or do you ju- can you have a basic plan that's not e-commerce? I think I could have a basic plan that's not e-commerce. Who's your website with? Uh, it's with Wix. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think you can. Like the $12 one. 
Um, yeah, I mean, if Etsy was easier for you, do Etsy. Did you do Etsy before? I did Etsy for some of the polymer stuff. I didn't really ever sell ceramics on there. Um, Try it. Yeah. Can't yeah, hurt. I think you might as well. I would, yeah. yeah, I would agree. Start there. Like it's, especially when you're trying to find your Instagram audience and your own website relies on you entirely. Like maybe some Google, but like imagine how many people are Googling and how many people are searching on Google for this specific thing. They might go to Etsy first or whatever. So, yeah. Um, I think the website establishes that it gives you a professionalism for the businesses that you're going to be approaching. And it gives a place for people to see like what events you're doing, if they're already a customer or interested in getting more of your stuff. And then the Etsy is like, I don't think that's unprofessional to have an Etsy. Like it, yeah. like it's a standard for a lot of people. I think like Katie Marks, uh, silver lining ceramics. I think she still just sells through her Etsy or maybe she has a, uh, her online store now, but yeah, I think yeah, she has yeah. like a pattern shop. That's, still it's like etsy pattern i don't know if she okay. still does that way but she might yeah yeah i don't think i mean i think a lot of people get off etsy because they want the like like the you know the uh, whatever to say like i have my own website and i'm completely relying on that and i'm off the etsy platform and on to better places but i don't know if it still works for you and you can still you still need to find customers and you're not like selling out and stuff. I say go Etsy. Mm-hmm. It's easy. Sold. Yeah. And Get then it. you'll figure out like which pieces sell. You got the, I think it's okay to have the earrings and the functional ceramics and you can describe them differently. And it shows an assortment of like customer bases that you can reach. Becca, I don't know. Did you? You had some cups and fancy things on Etsy too, right? I know you were doing your website. I did, then I took everything off when I it got way too complicated just because of shows. Okay. But, um, but yeah, I your did. earrings and, I and things like that on, the, on there. Yeah, I sold cups and yeah. 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 It's good. I mean, they're different, but they still kind of go together. Lots of people do polymer and lots of people do ceramics. It's same, same. Yeah. I wish I could do polymer, but it does not work with my hands well. Like, I like the colors better. Yeah, the colors are amazing. Yeah, and, but I just, uh, the consistency of it is way too sticky and way too soft for me. So, if you might try a different brand. Like, some of them, this you've done it all. She's like, yeah. I'm, I'm in clay lane now. I'm, <laughs> I'm in I've clay lane now. It. I don't yeah. need to. Yeah. But I still love playing with it, you know. it's It's super fun to play with. But, um, yeah, like, I, that's the one thing that I try to make sure people, like, know when I'm at a show. And I'm like, yeah, it's the kind of clay from a ground. And then I usually follow with nothing, not that there's anything wrong with polymer. Love polymer. I think it's great. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> love it. It's just not what I do. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the... uh yeah i think that i think that like to blankly answer blanketly blanketly answer your question like in a pretty short term i think the way for you to i presume the way for you to find your customers is you're going to have to find them online um just because of where your location is you don't have the benefit of being next to the water so if you were i don't think you'd have an issue selling anything yeah because water people are water people man there's (laughs) water people well water people are like people that like purple you know (laughs) i'm not even like particularly a water person I just are, uh, yeah, it's, that doesn't mean you can't sell to those people. Yeah. <laughs> are are there um? Because I would suspect a lot of like I know in my like area like there's a lot of shops that are just like we have Kentucky handmade stuff so like they pride themselves on being handmade in the state yeah. so like is there a place like that in like Myrtle Beach that's water but it's also like this is South Carolina made. Um, the, Charleston would be more likely than Myrtle Beach, but Charleston. I'll 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 look for that. Um, yeah. 
and some of it's just like digging deep on google maps and like yeah i think searching shops or you know handmade in these areas and like like i don't know if myrtle beach is the vibe i know that's like vacation spot it's probably yeah, not compared probably to like Charleston. I, mean, a I love an airbrush t-shirt as much as anybody. But <laughs> I have a Myrtle Beach airbrush t-shirt. <laughs> Dolphins and sunsets. Or like, I don't know, is is Wilmington any, like Wilmington, North Carolina, is that similar? Is that like um, a different vibe? I or like... haven't been to Wilmington in a long time, so I don't know. Um, but maybe some outer, I should look into some Outer Banks stuff. Outer Banks. I mean, you could probably reach out to I would say Melanie might be willing to answer some questions if you had some something to ask about, like some places she would recommend or businesses she follows that are local to her and Outer yeah. Banks. Well, I th- and I think Becca's suggestion of Florida yeah. is, is a good one as well. Columbia is the capital of South Carolina. It is. You're right, it is. It's so <laughs> down in the song that I just forget it. You know? I was thinking like Savannah. I've been to Savannah a few times. Savannah's kind of like Charleston, sure. though. Yeah, Savannah's like a, a smaller Charleston, but that's in Georgia. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, those beach towns. I'm sure there's cor- there's there's got to be some quirky beach towns. I don't know. I was thinking like sort... Well, I guess St. Augustine was a little older old school sort of yeah a little more historic st augustine florida yeah but yeah i i think it's definitely worth looking into some florida stuff i know some people in florida Mm -hmm. there you go i mean are there are there cities like that like what's the closest like big city that would be kind of quirky like atlanta maybe atlanta yeah, because I'm I'm pretty close to Charlotte, but Charlotte, from the artists that I know that live there, is not quirky either. Charlotte, North uh, Carolina, yeah. Yeah. And then Asheville is probably more like Asheville, traditional, maybe a little quirky. Asheville's very quirky. Um, okay. Yeah. They, they probably got a lot of like atmospheric pots and stuff there, but. Yeah, it's more like a little crunchier. Um uh-huh. But there might be some good shops there that you could. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how they would be about a having a two-day art fair in Asheville in September. So I'll kind of. Maybe that'd be good to walk around to different areas of Asheville and see some shops and jot some names down. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Now we got some got some good good brainstorming. Okay. I got a whole list here. You got man. a list. You got some work to do. <laughs> Have homework. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just trying. I'm still trying to look at the map. I'm in like a fucking dead zone, and I'm still it's trying. The to look whole at the goddamn state is a dead zone. It's no. I'm in a dead zone. I'm at <laughs> Andrew Linderman's house, which is in oh, a, you're in a Wi-Fi dead zone. Yeah. Georgia. Yeah, a lot of these small towns would probably be a little too difficult. Yeah. Atlanta's got to have some. Have yeah, some my sister too. lives in Atlanta, um, or outside of it, because Atlanta's like nothing but sprawl at this point. Yeah. Yeah, Atlanta's fun. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. All right. Any last questions? Yeah, do you have Where can else? people find you? Anything else you want to request uh, while we got you? Yeah. You can find me posting 20-second process videos on Instagram at Revisionist Studio. She's already going to have had a few <laughs> on there by the time this goes out. So And, like, oh. yeah, and, like, you know, we have, like, a thousand followers. So if all of you freaking go follow her on the Instawebs, get on it, guys. Like, love, share, follow. <laughs> Is that, like, the new live, laugh, love? Uh, no, Tim always does like, love, follow, or something like that. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much. These yeah. Really. I, I sent you a couple of shops that are, like, local to me that are kind of, they kind of fit that vibe. How so close are you to Louisville? Uh, about an hour and a half. Okay, I've got a good friend who lives in Louisville. I grew up in Louisville. 
I was just there on Saturday. It's yeah, my time. my parents and in laws live there, so yeah, that's actually where one of the one of the shops I sent you is in New Lou, which is kind of the the more um the I don't know, the quirkier part of Louisville. the newer part of Louisville. Yeah. New Lou. I don't think did you go there, Becca? We drove through there, I think, with Thank Deanna. You. Yeah. That's where that one place we went to dinner was after Becca yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. So when you like contact shops, do you just like is it Different, just like a hey, some, do you want sometimes to- they'll have sometimes they'll have like applicate like artist applications on their site. Yeah. Okay. Or it's just a cold <laughs> email and you just say, Hey, I'm a artist in so and so. I specialize in making ceramics. I make jewelry and polymer clay as well as this. I'm interested in, you know, a possible consignment or wholesale agreement partnership, you know, makes it sound a little less like, um, I'd love for you to sell my stuff, but it's like, I'd love to partner with you. Yeah. And I would love to hear back from you. And if you're interested, I just kind of put out a bunch of them and see what comes back. And then if it's like, you know, send them website, social and stuff like that. And it's easy as that. And they can, they can get a gist of like everything you make and what kind of offerings you have. I don't think you need to have, you know, a wholesale page on your site that details everything and all of your options that you offer. It's just more like getting a, an idea of what kind of things you make. And then if they want to follow up, you can discuss consignment or wholesale or whatever you can kind of go that route i've also like i've reached out to revelry before and they have like one potter and they were like oh we're not really interested in getting any other ceramics we've already got but the potter i think they have one or two potters or ceramic artists and they were like eh, we don't really maybe they don't sell that much of it or they don't have that much space to add more pottery and they'd already you know so i don't take it personally if they deny me i just figure it's not a not a good fit yeah that's that's the thing is just like applying to as much as possible i think just mm-hmm. because you know all these shows and stuff sometimes it'll be like one juror and if they don't resonate with your stuff you're not going to get right. in and you have to just not take it personally and keep applying yeah i really appreciate um that you guys are really transparent and like will say hey i applied to the show and i didn't get in um like that's helpful to hear that yeah. You guys also don't get into stuff. Normal people don't get into shows too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just a reality. I mean, there's this, the the show in Louisville. I'm determined I will get in next year. Like, I'm still gonna apply. I've already got. I've already missed it like four times, but I'm still gonna do it. Like, do it. I don't know what it is. Becca seems to think that if I put Louisville as my address, I would get in. I don't know. Try it. You gotta start tweaking like one thing every year. And like, I know my photos are gonna improve a little bit, but yeah. like, maybe if I put that I'm in Louisville, they're gonna be like, oh, he's a home hometown boy. Like, let's sure. Yeah. So they're like Northern yeah. Kentucky. What? No. Like. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's gonna be right. great. We'll get there. But yeah, keep applying. Don't get discouraged. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Sweet. Okay. Revisionist Studio on Instagram. On Instagram. And website is revisionaststudio.art because dot com was taken. Oh, that's sweet actually. Dot nice. art. Yeah. I like that. Sweet. All right. Carolyn. Thank <laughs> Carolyn. Caroline. 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 <laughs> I looked at it a second ago and I'm like, Shit. <laughs> I'm gonna mess this up. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Carol, thank, thank you. you. All right. All right. Bye. 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 Yo, yo, yiggity, yo. It's Becca here. Hey, just so you know, thank you for listening. And also, we have... What do we have again? A Patreon. Patreon. We have a Patreon that you should go and... If you want to donate to you could donate to it. If you don't, that's cool, too. But um, just Google Wheel Talk Podcast Patreon. Don't do the other one, uh, because there is a Wheel Talk on Patreon, but it's not us. 
so make sure you get the right one. It's in and the show notes. It's in the show notes. And also, um, leave us a review because they're fun to read. Okay, bye. <laughs>